It took a long wait, but we finally got to see Jaden Daniels play a football game for the Commanders. It's what we've really been waiting for since that draft in late April. And we finally got to see him out on the field. Now, of course, with rookie quarterbacks, you don't see him play too long. You just kind of let them get out there, get their feet wet a little bit. And that is exactly what happened with Jaden. He got one drive. We didn't get to see too much of him. But I want to at least go over that first drive, talk about Jaden Daniels a little bit, what I saw, my first impressions. And I'll tell you what, I think we have a star in the making. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm anticipating a lot from Jaden Daniels. We'll see how well that actually goes. Of course, it's Washington. They have a bad history when it comes to, you know, kind of developing quarterbacks and figuring things out. But this is new ownership. This feels like a new era. It's not even the same team name, really. So, you know, super excited for the future. What did we see from Jaden Daniels, though? First of all, he shows up rocking this Doug Williams jersey, which is absolutely incredible. Doug Williams, one of those guys that won a Super Bowl for Washington. Really, really sick jersey. I love just, you know, really bringing, you know, that pass in energy to the team. That was just super cool to see. And then he comes in and he just balls out. It was pretty clear that they kind of tried to come into the game and just kind of give him, you know, a little bit of a chill, you know, start and kind of just, you know, set his bearings. First play was just like this really easy handoff, nothing too crazy. And then on the next play, we finally get to see his first pass attempt, which ended up just being a really, really bad first pass attempt. It was a screen and he just sails it right over Austin Eckler, which look, it happens. We're talking about a rookie quarterback. He's kind of getting those like first game jitters kind of out of the way. And so I really had no problem with it. You know, you just kind of got to settle in and figure things out. Just like that, it's an early third down. You know, I think if they go three and out, I think we probably end up seeing another possession from Jaden. But no, instead we get really, which is the true highlight when we look back at his first preseason game. And that is this 42 yard bomb to Deami Brown down the sideline. This is incredible. I mean, this this is the throwing mechanics and exactly everything we think we can see from Jaden Daniels. This is why Jaden Daniels was a Heisman runner. It's why he went second overall. It's because he can make these kinds of throws as well as use his legs and kind of be the do-it-all offense. As for the throw over the shoulder, pretty much only where Diami can actually get it. It's beautiful. It looks great. That's what you want to see from your quarterback. Diami Brown, you know, great play with him. I feel like we haven't really seen much from him at all, kind of in Washington. I really thought that, you know, he'd be good last year playing with Sam Howell just because, you know, him and Howell obviously played at UNC together, kind of had some past connection. Didn't work out. Maybe we'll see something happen with him now. The, you know, the wide receiver room's a little weird. You obviously have Terry McLaurin. You know, I'm really excited to see Luke McCaffrey and we got to see a little bit of him play. But you look at Jahan Dotson and he was playing pretty long for a preseason game. You wouldn't expect to see too, too much of him. And instead he played a lot. And you know, he had a drop at least that I remember. It wasn't a great, great start for Jahan. After the big pass to Diami, we ended up seeing a bunch of rushes for Washington. They kind of just ran it. We got to see a lot of both Brian Robinson and we got to see a lot of Austin Eckler. You know, still kind of weird seeing Austin Eckler in that Washington jersey. But I think that's kind of what we're going to expect from the running back room this year is a lot of B-Rob and just a lot of Eckler. I mean, those are two guys that I think are just going to be, you know, the vast, vast majority of the run game. I like the way Eckler can obviously play, you know, coming out of the backfield. And really, you know, I don't really mind B-Rob coming out of the backfield either. So I feel really comfortable with that running back group. As for the offensive line, you do go down there. They get a bad false start. That pushes them back a little bit, but it doesn't end up mattering. We get to see the final play of Jaden Daniels' day. It's a little read option. You see him peer off and he ends up rushing right in for a touchdown caps off a perfect drive 11 plays 70 yards it's literally his first pro drive week one in the preseason and knowing that he was probably going to go in and only play one drive that's what you expect from these guys like Caleb Williams like Drake May is that they're going to come in just kind of get their feet wet see what happens so for him to come out have that great first drive I think is amazing now I will say looking back this is a game that I didn't watch when it was happening live you know I was at NASCAR all weekend in Richmond so I ended up coming back watching the game I knew he had played well. I know a lot of people were talking about it. I'd seen the highlights, all of that. I was disappointed to see, you know, this wasn't the Jets, you know, first team defense. You know, this was second stringers, third stringers. And so it really is hard to say, you know, what that kind of looks like. You know, you know, I know, I think it was Jalen Key that I, you know, I saw out there, you know, Mr. Irrelevant. You had Quantez Stiggers. Like you had these guys for the Jets that were these late round draft picks, guys that you wouldn't, you know, are definitely not going to be out there, you know, come week one of the regular season. Jaden Daniels is going to be playing much better talent when that time does come around. And so it's really hard to evaluate how he played in that one drive because for one, it was one drive. 
you know, it, it's really hard to say. And it goes the same thing with Caleb and Drake. You know, a lot of people have obviously criticized Drake for his first drive, but at the end of the day, it's one drive, you know? You know, you see players all the time in the NFL, even pro guys, guys like, you know, Aaron Rodgers, whatever, the top, top guys, they get better as the game goes on sometimes. And so it's really hard to say, you know, what happens. Maybe the defense starts to figure out Jaden. You have no idea. And so while you saw these promising tools, you can see what Jaden does. It's hard to make that evaluation just off of one drive, especially when it wasn't against this top tier talent that we are going to see once the season really does come around. That was all we saw from Jaden. And then we saw, you know, the rest of the quarterbacks come out and play. Marcus Mariota came in. He's the guy that I think is obviously your pretty clear backup to Jaden, the guy we're going to see, um, you know, if Jaden goes down at all this year, they, you know, want to take a step back or anything. So I think we'll see a lot of him. Jeff Driscoll got some play time, you know, a seasoned vet, a guy that I think, you know, can help with the development of Jaden Daniels because, you know, he has played a bunch of games. He's been, you know, a solid NFL quarterback at times. And then, you know, finally you have Sam Hartman. I think a lot of people are going to be excited about Sam Hartman. I get it. I think he actually looked pretty solid in, you know, what I've seen from him. But this guy, <laughs> I think he's a practice squad guy. You know, at best, he, I don't think he's making the roster. I do think Driscoll probably gets that QB3 role. I think they really do want to focus on that veteran presence. And you probably don't want to put too much pressure on Jaden with a guy like Hartman, even though he shouldn't really threaten him. I think it just makes sense to put, you know, Hartman on the practice squad, just stash him, maybe eventually. He does make the 53-man roster, especially if you do have some kind of quarterback injury, then that's a great call. I know that was a lot of Jaden Daniels talk, but going past Jaden and Daniels, I think the other person that I really do feel like I need to talk about is Emmanuel Forbes, a guy that has, you know, faced a lot of scrutiny. He really, really struggled last year. You know, if you remember him just getting carved up by AJ Brown, carved up by uh, most wide receivers he faced, you know, we're talking about a first round pick who was a bit undersized and, you know, it was a very scrutinized pick. Obviously with the next pick, the Patriots went with Christian Gonzalez, who, you know, a lot of Washington fans wanted with that pick. Instead, Rivera went with Forbes, you know, they liked Forbes and how he could kind of be a playmaker and, you know, get some interceptions for some turnovers overs and you're one that's just not what happened and while Gonzalez didn't play much you know and it's kind of hard to say exactly what his future is I guess he did look good in the few games he did actually play and so you know if Gonzalez does end up being a really good player it's really something that Washington's gonna get a lot of flack for I think for a really long time the Jets do end up coming back they tie the game at seven they ultimately win the game who actually cares but the problem with the Jets tying it is this is on Forbes it's a backup quarterback it's a backup wide receiver I mean we're talking about a second year undrafted wide receiver receiver. Forbes ends up just getting beat on this fade. Jason Brownlee ends up catching it. And, you know, these are backups. Still beating Emmanuel Forbes, a guy that you drafted to, you know, in essence, theoretically play against some of your top wide receivers and some really good players. And it's been pretty clear that he hasn't been able to play with them. And he still can't even play with some of these other guys. But honestly, other than that, I thought he did look pretty solid. We've heard reports that he did bulk up. I don't know how true those are. I haven't really noticed too much of a difference. But I think looking through this offseason, obviously, Jaden Daniels is going to be who everybody's talking about. Some of the other rookies, of course, I think Luke McCaffrey's getting a lot, going to get a lot of talk about him. And I think he looks pretty good. I'm excited for him. Senate is a guy that I think looked fantastic. He is a serious matchup problem. When you look at the tight end position, he had some good plays. I'm really excited for what he could ultimately become. I think he's still a little ways away. You know, you obviously have Zach Ertz for a reason now who didn't even play. Then as unflashy as it is, I think one of the most important things to talk about really is kicker. You know, Joey Sly's on the Patriots now. And while I think Sly did have his issues, obviously, you know, I think he's a guy that just has a ton of legs. I mean, he is so powerful, so strong, but super inaccurate at times. And that's really tough as a team. Washington, you know, now has Riley Patterson and, you know, he had a bad doink. And I just don't feel great about the future kicker situation for Washington at this point. We're obviously going to have to see what happens down the stretch and, you know, how they are able to improve that position or if they just want to go with Patterson. But, you know, I think there's a good chance that, you know, Washington might have to switch kickers um, at least before the season or maybe even during the season, maybe a couple times. I just don't feel super confident in the kicker position. All in all, Washington loses their first preseason game. Who cares? It's the preseason. It doesn't matter. What ultimately cared if you watched this game, you wanted to see what Jane Daniels was capable of. What he looks like as a rookie, he was a second overall pick for a reason. And I think really he flashed more than Caleb Williams. He flashed more than Drake May. And the reality is, is that that doesn't matter. At the end of the day, you know, we saw a lot of flashes from Kenny Pickett. Sometimes it's a lot easier when you're playing these low level defenses. You know, Jaden has had some good days at training camp. Jaden's had some bad days at training camp. That's what it's like. He's a rookie quarterback. He's not going to figure everything out immediately. You know, you can't set the bar at CJ Stroud just because he was a second overall pick. Stroud had a great fan
fantastic rookie year, that doesn't necessarily matter. You know, I think we got to, you know, keep looking this preseason. I'm going to keep, you know, evaluating Jaden Daniels, keep making these videos and seeing, you know, how things are changing, where the improvement is. But I think the biggest thing is really what are the weapons around him? I think you have Terry McLaurin. I think he's great. I feel pretty decent about tight end, but how improved is the offensive line? I think is my number one biggest question. Is Jahan Dotson actually going to be your solid number two? Or, you know, is it going to be somebody else that kind of brings their way into the mix? You know, I think Alameda Zacchaeus is a really good safety blanket, you know, guy at UVA. I've been watching him for a long time. He could be good. He could get plenty of play time. You obviously have Luke McCaffrey now. Who knows where Jahan Dotson really does fit in this mix? Maybe even Deami Brown, you know, makes some kind of run. Ultimately, this is just a preseason. There's no point in freaking out of Jaden Daniels' play time, what it looks like. It's so early. I think he's going to be good. I think he has all the tools. He's very mobile. I think he showed that a little bit. He obviously has a good arm. I'm super excited. I think the future's bright. Just we don't need to get there yet. Two more preseason games, and then we can really start going super hard and overreacting on week one of the season. But all in all, at the end of the day, it was just so exciting to finally, after such a long wait, see Jaden Daniels play for the Commanders. Season's almost here, and hopefully the new future quarterback for Washington is here.